connecting bridge to false chain. Success. 69 block confirmations. 420 UTC. What's up, what's up, everybody, and welcome to EMP Money. My name is AJ. I'm the team lead here, and this is our live AMA. We come to you every Monday and Thursday at 6.45 p.m. Eastern. Today is another doozy of a AMA, so lots to cover, lots to go over. But before we get to that, I want to introduce my co-host with the most and fellow team member, LA. LA, how are you today? Hey, hey, hey. What a day. What a week. Oh, my Lord. So much going on. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's been jam-packed, and we uh, have a lot to update all of you on on this AMA. We probably will skip the Q&A. Uh, just because this will definitely be over an hour. Uh, but uh, if we can get to it, we will. And if there's any immediate questions uh, on stuff that we go over, feel free to type it in the live chat, and we'll do our best to get to it uh, in real time. But uh, all the uh, questions on Discord and uh, everywhere else will be addressed on Monday for the next AMA. So, uh, all right. And without further ado, before we get started, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps the algorithm. And again, uh, all the ad revenue from our YouTube channel goes to support the protocols. So uh, the EMP mothership, as it, as it were. Uh, all right, so uh, I want to start with just another market update. Again, uh, the, the market is just looking incredible. And I don't think we've ever seen a new all-time high before the happening event. So that alone is super bullish. It may have happened early, early on in Bitcoin, but uh, I don't remember. I have to look back. But Bitcoin, again, well over 50K. Now uh, uh, ETH hit uh, 2,800 today as well, uh, I think. So again, uh, just insane movement. And, you know, uh, it, it's just a, a week-long rally. You know, green, green day after green day after green day. So uh, again, I don't want to... Don't get overly hyped. I mean, obviously, when we see uh, a lot of this happen, there's bound to be a bit of a pullback. But, you know, I think everything's finally coming together. Um, I know I mentioned this a while ago. Uh, I think the ETF uh, approval was, was kind of a lagging indicator where, you know, people kind of bought the rumor and sold the news. But now I think we're really starting to see that ETF momentum really pay off. And, and again, I mean... Moving into the happening and into the next year and the, the, the subsequent years, I think this is really going to help, you know, uh, uh, harden the Bitcoin price as we continue to go up. Um, so, again, I think the ETF momentum is just now starting to show and we're, we're just getting started. So uh, I also heard some rumors of an ETH ETF being approved. Uh, again, we said that would be the next big event uh, for for us in particular, uh, you know, with Fusion and EMP having that exposure to ESO, 
you know, everything is really coming together uh, with the market overall. And, you know, we, we really haven't even gotten started yet. So we talked a little bit about the bull run on the last AMA. Uh, so definitely join that to, to listen. But I think, you know, after the happening uh, later this year, you know, around uh, October timeframe, we, we can just see some numbers that, that we're not even, we can't even fathom right now. So, uh, yeah, Ella, anything you want to say to that? Yeah, it's been crazy. Maybe uh, Cool Sheet needs to make a new song uh, called Green Day After Green Day After Green Day. And <laughs> put some uh, clips from the band Green Day in there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I heard he's got a new song on the horizon, so I know, we're waiting. Of- a bunch of alpha from Cool Street, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, sure. All right, so we'll we'll jump right in now to Spark Swap. Uh, again, just some updates on this. Uh, we'll go over everything we can, and then um, some more updates on L1 Dex uh, and some other stuff as we get to the end, as well as bonds. We're gonna do a whole section on bonds. Uh, and you said this on telegram but we have like the most insanely long lineup today so we very likely won't have time for questions because we do have a meeting after the ama but we're gonna try our best but i kind of uh stacked our notes like literally two miles long so you're gonna have to bear with us but we have a lot of stuff we want to cover today so 100 percent, awesome all right so uh first up is sparks pop uh again vaults have just been crushing it uh, a huge success, not only for volume, but also for uh, the price of EMP. I think a lot of people um, are taking profit into the vault ETFs. And remember, holding Spark in the ETFs, that is also pretty beneficial because not only is it another way to lock up Spark, um, obviously you're not earning from Sparkler, but you are uh, getting exposure to all the tokens that are in that ETF. So in other words, if you have, uh, say your particular vault takes profit in, uh, you know, uh, Spark, uh, Pulse, and ETH uh, ETF, again, just as an example, um, that means that the ETF itself is also rebalancing. So when the price of Pulse goes up uh, and, and, and Spark, you know, goes up, then uh, it takes profit into, you know, the stable token and vice versa. So over time, just because of that rebalancing, the ETFs will go up in value, uh, you know, assuming that, uh, you know, there's not a major dump at any of those uh, those assets. So I think that's super bullish as well. And, you know, we've seen how powerful that is uh, on the, the token price too. And I haven't even looked at it, LA, but uh, I think, what, over 1.9 million in TVL on the DEX, uh, on the vaults alone? On the pulse chain vaults on decks, yeah, we're we're creeping up real close to that two million mark. So that's gonna be an exciting milestone. And we can see it really having that direct uh effect on the TVL. So uh sorry, on the volume on our decks. So for sure. Um it's doing everything we wanted it to do. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Again, as a result, volume's been, you know, pretty much consistent. Between the 800,000 and a million uh, daily mark, we had an all-time high of about 2 million daily volume when we first launched. Uh, but, you know, it's still double or triple where we were before the vault launch. So that's super bullish. Sparkle payouts have been really juicy as well. Uh, they've, they've come down a little bit over the last two days. Um, uh, but again, I mean, remember, the, the fees, you know, that's a, that's a real-time stat. So... You know, if we have a big day, uh, that can pump Sparkler in a matter of hours. And we also distribute those rewards randomly so people can't, you know, front run. Uh, knowing that we have a lot of volume coming in, uh, they're not trying to gamify the system. So, uh, but yeah, super bullish on that. Um, there's a, yeah, I just wanted to add, there's also a lot of game theory as well now that the vaults are around because some people chose to go into the vaults some people didn't and so um some you know people are working different strategies so some people are um you know working a strategy where they're adding more to sparkler and they're fighting dilution faster than those that are 
you know, working a different strategy that's more focused on 100% compounding in vaults. And so, so there's a lot of game theory and different strategies that can be implemented. And it really makes this fun. Um, and there's just multiple ways to win in this ecosystem. And that's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, no, 100%. LA. And I think that's a really great, uh, a great place to have that discussion is in our socials. So I know in Telegram specifically, we see a lot of people, you know, uh, shooting different strategies back and forth, what had a min max, you know, the returns. I mean, if you have any questions on that or want some feedback, uh, you know, all of our socials are a great place for the community to talk about that. Um, obviously, we have, you know, some base recommended strategies of the infinite money uh, generator, but uh, it's up to all of you, like Ellie said, to take it and fit it into your own investment strategy and, you know, maybe come up with some cool ways to, you know, uh, uh, profit even more. I know uh, somebody asked today, too, about uh, ink rewards. I mean, remember, the vaults are also compatible with PulseX farms. So uh, if you are bullish on ink as well, uh, you can definitely go into a vault over there, uh, you know, and, and, and have it accumulate. Uh, and that's better, again, more more uh, uh, buying pressure on Spark. And then if you choose to cash out, you can always cash out in ink uh, as well. So really important things to consider. Um, and again, everything benefits our ecosystem. And those that are in Sparkler are the ones that win the hardest because, again, they're essentially the owners of the protocol. So if you're still sleeping on Sparkler, again, not financial advice, um, definitely make sure you check that out and uh, and get some exposure for sure. So, uh, all right. and yeah, go ahead. Yeah. We, we went over on our last AMA a new uh, graphic that we had designed uh, using the Spark Maxi uh, vault, and uh, we got a lot of great feedback on that. We are in the process of designing some more graphics uh, that are a little bit more advanced um, using some of the other vaults. And so those will be ready soon. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give you an update on that. We want to kind of balance showing a more advanced strategy, but also making them easy enough to understand on a graphic without having like entire paragraphs written with them. So, um, yeah, we're going to have those uh, out soon. And we have some of our brightest minds in the community helping out to get those ready. And uh, those will be out very soon. So uh, it's exciting to have some new strategies. At, like we were just saying, you know, having people uh, discuss different strategies and figure out what the best way to work the system is. Yeah, no doubt. So, and I put the graphic up for those of you that are on YouTube, you can see we'll post it and eventually it'll actually be on the vault page uh, as well. So, and we're, yeah, we're, we're coming up with a few other variations of this uh, to, to meet, you know, whatever your desire. So, uh, all right. Awesome. Let me go back here. Hang on one sec. All right. So, uh, again, some other news with SparkSwap. We've been working on setting up, uh, a few new partners behind the scenes as well. Um, and this again, mainly, uh, bridge partners that will drive even more volume and awareness to our bridge. And speaking of that, we had an amazing uh, video from Crypto Coffee. Uh, I think it was yesterday, right, LA? You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think it was over... Uh, Maybe two days ago, but yeah. Yeah, I, I lose track of the, of the days. Yeah, it was a couple of days ago. Um, he did a really great video um, just basically showing how to save money on fees by using the spark swap bridge to get onto pulse chain from bsc or arbitrum so um he's been really great um he does of course always um caution his audience to be safe and uh you know uh like do their own research and and always be cautious you know when it comes to DeFi sure. and what they're into which we appreciate because we want you know our users to be educated and and not just ape into things without doing any research um but he is definitely becoming a bigger and bigger fan of us it seems so we're very appreciative for the 
help promoting our bridge. Yeah, a hundred percent. And again, he uh, he also highlighted again, like Ellie said, it's always important, you know, that you understand any potential risk. You know, it wasn't him saying that our bridge is risky. It was just him saying that you know uh, uh, any user needs to be aware. And yeah, with that, he also was very impressed and uh, and and was you know saying how important it is that we allow users to bridge directly into Pulse, uh, not not only to mitigate any potential risk, but also to get gas. Again, if you're brand new to Pulse Chain, so remember our bridge is also a cross-chain swap. Uh, essentially, because you can bridge any asset from uh, uh, BS, BNP network or Arbitrum uh, onto Pulse, and as long as it's an asset that we support, you can choose what to receive. Now, again, bear in mind, you might pay a little bit extra because there's an additional swap fee uh, uh, that 0.5%, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 0.3% on the swap fee, 0.5% on the bridge. Um, uh, so there is a little bit more of a fee, but if you'd rather receive Pulse directly, then absolutely go for that. I mean, we're we're here to accommodate whatever you might need. So, uh, all right, awesome. Uh, what else, LA? Oh, so uh, the other thing was we did have a temporary boost on two of the vaults. They were uh, at the very top in pink. Uh, again, uh, the reason we put that up, we put a few thousand of our own funds to boost those vaults so that all of you that got in early, you know, would get a little bit extra and would make up a little bit of that sting of having to remove from some of the feed uh, vaults. Again, uh, I'm sorry, farms. The Remember, the withdrawal fee on some of the farms still applies, uh, uh, you know, uh, and so that was the whole point of that. Those have now come to an end. Um, uh, but again, just wanted to mention, you know, that uh, the, the uh, they're bound to their standard API, APY now. So those that APY will be what it will be. Again, APY always fluctuates, um, but hopefully you all made some good gains uh, on the boosted vaults. Uh, and we may boost other vaults in the future. You never know. Sometimes if we need more liquidity uh, on the bridge or, you know, maybe we just want to have a promo, then we can boost those vaults uh, at any time for sure. So, uh, all right, Ella, anything else on that? I think that's it on that. Cool. All right. So again, just major success with the vaults, uh, you know, and SparkSwap in general. You know, I know that uh, it can be tempting to cash out part of your EMP positions, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, you know, to increase your positions over on Spark. Uh, but, you know, just remember there's a lot that goes into that. So we'll talk about that next. But I think that pretty much covers it all for SparkSwap. Uh, so... Again, uh, we're not really taking many questions at all today. If you have anything you want to add in the live chat, uh, feel free to do so. But uh, all right, so back to that point again with SparkSwap being so uh, lucrative at the moment and you know looking very healthy, um, I know that a lot of you have been tempted to maybe sell some EMP positions to or eShare positions to go into uh, you know uh, uh, the the vaults or farms on Spark. Now, there's, uh, I, I understand where people come from with this, but I just want to make sure that everybody understands the potential risks uh, as well. And, you know, it, it may sound good in theory, but you may be able to back yourself into a corner. Uh, and so we just want to highlight uh, a few things. So um, if you're selling eShare, uh, you know, we purposely have lowered the liquidity on eShare right now to discourage selling. And, you know, this means that every time you go to sell in the share, you're getting a, a major price impact, uh, especially on how much you're deciding to sell. And again, this is all part of our pre-launch plan, getting ready for fusion. Um, so, uh, and above all that, you know, there's also quite a bit of front running bots on uh, each share that we can't control. So you really need to make sure that you, you know, if you are taking profit uh, or buying rather, uh, that you do it in smaller increments with your price impact uh, or, or slippage set very, very low. So, uh, yeah. Um, Ella, anything you want to add to that so far? I know I have a few more points, but I want to go bit by bit. Yeah, and and just uh, to preface this conversation, um, it, it's, it's just inspired by um, a bunch of chit chat that we've 
seen both in the chats and then some private messages that we've received and stuff. So um, also just like through some some chats that I've had, I've seen some major light bulbs go off after just kind of reiterating some of these facts. And uh, it occurred to me that, you know, maybe some of these things haven't been thought about for a while and it was important to kind of share them to everyone. So I wanted to have larger discussion about it today. So, so yeah, uh, the first thing is, yeah, if you're sharing, if you're selling eShare right now, obviously not only are you selling at a huge loss, but we did purposely lower the liquidity so that if you are selling, it's, I mean, it's, it's strongly discouraged because you're, you're losing out when you're selling because of that price impact. I mean, you're really shooting yourself in your own foot by selling at this moment because of, because of what you're going to get when you're selling, when you're selling your shares. Um, that's the first one. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to move on or if you're yeah, going to move no, on. Yeah, totally. I just wanted to, if you had anything to add for what I said already. So, but yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, price impact is, is key. I think, you know, the other uh, idea that people have, I think is, you know, if you want to temporarily sell your issue now and then buy back in some form, you know, uh, or, or more later as we get closer to sacrifice, you know, uh, it's actually maybe the exact backwards idea because you know eShare has always been very volatile and it can spike extremely quickly again having that low liquidity is a double-edged sword and you know if you try to and that's why i've, I've, I've never really been a fan of or I'm much more uh, uh for personal speaking i've been a holder i mean i i try not to get into risky volatile assets uh especially for my core holdings but it's fun to speculate on you know, uh, more of a volatile asset like eShare. And with that in mind, though, I'm not day trading eShare. You know, I'm trying to accumulate. And we'll talk about a really important uh, thing in a minute here uh, about focusing on your your uh, your token amount and not the dollar price. But again, my point is that you can actually really get yourself in a horrible position if, uh, you know, you sell eShare, Uh, or EMP for that matter, and go try to make gains elsewhere in the hopes that you're able to buy back later. And then before you know it, the price takes off. You know, again, a simple announcement of Fusion going live, you know, uh, uh, many other factors. And now you have way less exposure uh, to eShare or EMP, which sucks because all of you have been holding so patiently, you know, and accumulating this entire time. So, you know, uh, again, LA, I don't know if you want to elaborate more on that, but that's a really important factor. Yeah, for sure. Um, the, it, I'm just trying to reiterate what you said there because you said it quite well. Um, if you're selling your eShare now to, to move it over to Pulse, not only are you experiencing the price impact and the front running bots, which is going to get you a lot less than even the lows that we're sitting at. But you then, you know, you, you do obviously have the potential to make some gains over on Pulse, but then you have to bridge it back over to BSC. And at the time, because of the low liquidity, because of the volatility of eShare and the potential for it to spike way up when we do make an announcement about a date or when the sacrifice does begin, you have the potential to see eShare double, triple, quadruple, go up by five times, six times. Who who knows? None of us know exactly how much it, it has the potential to rise by when announcements are made. But if you were in from the beginning, we would see eShare go up and down by, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars in a matter of two, three hours. Sometimes it would go up and down and up and down and up and down every single day. And lots of people would swing trade eShare because of that fact. That's just how it was at the beginning. Uh, it has the potential to be that way again. Um because eShare has always been a volatile asset. And so if you're banking on the fact that you can bring it back over and buy it for the same price that you sold it for, you, it, that's very unlikely to happen. 
what's more likely to happen is that you would have to buy it back for much more than you sold it for, which means you're selling it at a low and you're buying it back at a loss. And so sure. um, you have to ask yourself if that's going to be worth the gains that you're making temporarily when we are getting closer and closer to launching Fusion. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think again, uh, one one thing I do want to mention too, uh, before we get into this next point, which is super important. But you know, uh, I think it's also about uh, you know, I know a lot of you may be over invested, uh, whether it's with EMP or eShare or other protocols. You know, that's why we say all along, never invest more than you can afford to. And with that statement, that allows you to farm or do other things on spark or or again maybe another protocol that that you're bullish on too without ever having to sell you know your core uh holdings and i think that's a really important uh mindset shift as well that you know i know i've made as a more seasoned crypto investor you know you always want to have that dry powder on the side and never go all in on anything because when you have to sell your your assets to go into another play, that is like the number one way to get wrecked. So just again, food for thought with that. Um, you know, when it comes to eShare specifically, I think it's about swapping your mentality. You know, uh, in the farm, it's not about looking at the dollar amount when you're earning per day. And this is a another o crypto OG uh, advice right here. Uh, it's about stacking as much of the, you know, eShare or token itself as possible. We talked about this a lot in some of our earlier AMAs, uh, you know, last year, especially with Detonator. Um, you know, the idea was accumulating LPs, actual tokens, not necessarily focusing on the dollar value, because again, the dollar value is a bit irrelevant uh, at the moment, especially, you know, if we, we all believe that the market's going to go up overall and therefore uh drag everything up with it you know the, the dollar value is going to be much better uh at some point and so i think again the idea is that you really want to focus on stacking you know the token itself and you know if you again are bullish on the future you know where fusion is going you know we're getting back to peg uh, all of that will fall into place so um and you know uh every e share you you know could be worth much more in the future again that's not financial advice it could be less as well we don't know but you know with all the cards stacked in the deck in our favor uh i think that that is uh you know a pretty good uh mindset to have moving forward so yeah la again you want to elaborate on that at all for sure i just wanted to share actually what i was sharing in a conversation i was having with one of our emperors yesterday and i was just sharing my personal strategy so when it comes to the farms on our EMP site, I was just saying that my personal strategy is just to earn as much e-share as humanly possible before we make the announcements uh, or before the sacrifice starts. Um, to me, the lock period in the e-share farm is absolutely irrelevant because it's going to be unlocked when sacrifice starts. To me, the dollar value of what I'm earning in the farms is absolutely irrelevant. And to me, the current dollar value of e-share is completely irrelevant. And I'll explain why. Because I understand and I believe it, and this is my personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt and have your own opinion, but I believe in the potential of where eShare is going. And, it, and I have my own personal ideas of where I believe eShare is going to land when we get to Fusion. I won't say those out loud because I don't want to paint any picture that may or may not be the case, but I have personal opinions of where I think eShare will land when we uh, launch Fusion. And uh, to me, every single eShare that I am stacking is amounting to, you know, the future price of eShare. It has nothing to do with the current price. I am stacking and earning as much eShare as possible 
One, because it is going to get me ahead in fusion. And I want as much e-share as possible because a lot of it is going to get sacrificed into fusion to help me get ahead in the game, to strategize and to come up with strategies to earn as quickly as possible within the game. Two, because I do plan to sell a portion of my e-share and I plan to DCA up and there's certain price points which I plan to sell at and today's price and today's dollar amount that I'm earning in the farms is completely irrelevant because I need to tick up the physical number of e-shares I have. That is the number that's relevant. So every week I take the earnings in the farms that I have and I put it back into the farm to earn as many e-share as possible before fusion launches because I want that number to be as high as humanly possible before we start because my personal plan is to, to divide it into three chunks, not three equal chunks, uh, but three chunks. Uh, part of it is going to be sacrificed into fusion. Part of it is going to be turned into EMP to be sacrificed uh, to build my central grid to build the central grid position and uh, part of it is going to be kept to sell and that's my personal strategy I don't know what your strategy is but um, in order to do so in order to have e-share to work with I need to earn as much as possible and and you know when I have some spare change I'm also stacking you know when we hit lows here and there but primarily it's it's earning it and in order to do so, I'm adding to my farm. I don't care if it gets locked up because as soon as we go into the sacrifice, it's going to get unlocked. So to me, that's irrelevant. But that's my strategy. Hopefully that kind of shed some light on that a little bit and to why the dollar amount really doesn't matter whatsoever. Yeah, 100%. Those are great points. I have a few additional points. Again, you know, the other thing that, that then we'll end on this and then we have a lot more to go over, but the, the, there's also some other factors. So number one, like Ella said, breaking her, you know, and again, this is a personal strategy, but breaking it up into three separate groups, you know, you can absolutely sell some e-share to take profit when Fusion is live. I mean, that is the beauty of our ecosystem that we're, we're building with Fusion is, you know, the idea is that we encourage responsible profit taking, but also profit taking that doesn't hurt uh, other individuals. So, you know, eShare is still a, a speculative asset. Again, you know, energy is the e-liquid version that will help you grow your uh, position in Fusion. And that alone, you know, we, we're going to get into a, a supply shock. And that's part of my other point here is we have to remember eShare is a very low supply token. And, you know, I think we saw a little bit of, again of that by the rumor, sell the news. We saw eShare spike up a little bit. Uh, we went through the happening. Now it's back down a little bit. Uh, but honestly, the range has been pretty tight. You know, it goes anywhere from 20 to 40. Uh, and that's been about what the range is. So with the, the less emissions coming out now, though, again, uh, we've halved, uh, just like Bitcoin, we've halved the amount of eShare that comes out. Um, and you can see, again, the way the contract works, we, we mint everything all at once. Uh, and then distribute it over the year uh, time, and then next year will be even half of that. But you can see, even now, you know, uh, not including what's to be released this whole year, uh, we're still about 65,000 total uh, e-share, which is extremely low. I mean, you know, uh, again, most most DeFi protocols have, you know, hundreds of thousands of tokens, if not millions or billions, or even trillions of tokens. So again, uh, all of that plays in and, you know, the only currency that will be, you know, uh, 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 tradable, so to speak, within Fusion is eShare. So, you know, all the rewards that we distribute have to go through eShare first, you know, uh, the volume on eShare, you know, once Fusion is out, um, could be incredibly healthy. So there's just so many existential factors that I think people just don't think about or you know, and if you are thinking about it, great, uh, you know, good on you. Uh, make an informed decision on what you want to do personally. Again, we're not here to sell shame. Anybody, the beauty of crypto is that you can do whatever you want. 
you know, we've also said many times before, you know, we could have just said, you know, sorry, everybody, we're locking up all your EMP and eShare until Fusion is ready. You know, a lot of other protocols do that, where they just lock everybody up, and then now you have to wait until we're ready. Imagine how much harder the wait would have been uh, if we would have made that decision, which, by the way, we would never, ever do, but uh, on, on waiting for Fusion, if you didn't have the possibility of, you know, buying or selling EMP and eShare. So, again, just some very important facts to keep in mind. Um, and, yeah, I think we covered a lot of it. Uh, Ella, anything else before we move on to a little bit more info? Same vein, uh, but about EMP. I think that was it about eShare. Yeah. Okay. So, again, along the same lines uh, in the same vein, you know, uh, as well with EMP, you know, not only are you missing out on the opportunity uh, to buy EMP at, at historically low levels, uh, especially recently, you know, we see when ETH pumps, we usually see people take property in EMP, uh, but you also are missing out on the, the exes that you get built in just from the peg bonus alone. So, uh, Ella, you want to elaborate on that? You do such a great job uh, explaining the peg bonus. Yeah, so if you're selling EMP right now to, uh, well, in general, but especially if you're selling it to then try and move it over to earn on SparkSwap, you're doubly shooting yourself in the own, in your own foot because not only are you missing out on this opportunity to literally earn the maximum number of X's on your money to receive like the maximum peg bonus if you were to be purchasing EMP right now. Um, but by selling it, you are losing that opportunity because when you want to come back in later, EMP will almost certainly be higher because we will be closer or at the sacrifice period and we will be closer or at peg, which means you will lose out on the opportunity to have that bonus potentially altogether, which means you could be losing yourself out of thousands of dollars, uh, which is huge. So basically right now we're at about seven cents for EMP. Um, in order to calculate the peg bonus, you'll take today's ETH price and divide by 4,000 and you'll get uh, the peg level. So uh, I'm not a math wizard. I'm not going to try to do it on the spot because we all know what will happen. I'll uh, give you a number that is crazy wrong. Um, yes, and then so, everybody will let us hear about that. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So for like the next week. So we won't do that, but um, you guys can do that. And, uh, and then you can, you know, divide one by the other and figure out the number of X's. Um, but Florida Joe is saying it's a 10 X. So I trust him, his judgment. Yes. So totally. there you So yeah, again, at peg, you're looking at, you know, about 70 cents from here. Uh, and you know, at, at, at when ETH was that magic $4,000 number, you know, you're looking at a dollar, uh, EMP. And so. Again, the, those numbers are very achievable, uh, especially with the, the bull run coming. But yeah, go ahead, Ellie. Yeah. So for every bit that we get closer to peg, you know, you're losing an X. You're losing an X. You're losing an X. And so if, if, if you're trying to time it properly of getting back in and buying your your EMP back, you're almost certainly going to get the timing wrong and you're going to end up losing out on at least hundreds, if not thousands of dollars towards your position, your ownership position in the central grid, you know? For sure. And that is huge. It's, it's absolutely huge. So it's, it's not the right move, but you have the ability to do whatever you want because you have your own free will. So do what you like. Yeah, no, LA, absolutely great points. And, you know, again, there are other opportunities, I think, within that that still, you know, uh, that still uh, honor everything that we're talking about today. And that would be farming EMP, ETH, LP on SparkSwap. I think... A lot of people are still sleeping 
uh, on this. I mean, obviously, there is some opportunity cost. You know, that is withdrawing from the farms on, on B BSC, um, uh, swapping over, bridging over, depositing, and then you got to bridge back when sacrifice starts as well. So don't get me wrong, there is some substantial fees uh, involved in that, but there may be an argument to be made that it is more profitable to bridge over. Again, you would withdraw from the farms on EMP, you would take the ETH uh, side, uh, you would buy EMP with that, whatever that is. Again, say you had $1,000, uh, $500 of that is actual ETH. You go ahead on, on BNB, you buy the EMP uh, with that, break your LP, buy $500 worth of uh, EMP with your ETH. Now you have $1,000 worth of ETH, uh, EMP, I'm sorry, EMP alone. You then bridge that over to Pulse Chain uh, through our bridge, um, and then you could absolutely sell in that situation, again, because you just bought the EMP, you can sell half your EMP um, or, or just zap in uh, to, to the contract um, and now be earning, you know, on the EMP ETH on, on Pulse Chain. And again, because of our arbitrage and price stabilizer, um, if, you know, for whatever reason, EMP starts to run, you still own actual EMP where you're not at risk of missing out. So those are a lot of things that, again, uh, just you need to consider uh, and what makes sense for you. So, yeah, LA, again, anything you want to add to that? No, I think you covered that. All right, wonderful. Let me get back to my notes. Hang on one second. And, yeah, that farm, again, just on, on Pulse right now, you know, it's about a 50% APR. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure that it'd be rise even higher on the vaults. So it is lucrative for sure. So, all right, hang on one sec. So for those of you who have any questions about how certain parts of the ecosystem work when it comes to sacrificing, just a reminder that in our EMP fusion educational series and on our white paper we do have sacrifice sections that break down piece by piece every part of the ecosystem and go in depth of how each part of the ecosystem works when it comes to the sacrifice and so you can access the white paper through our docs uh, right on the EMP website and then the um, explainer series you can find on a playlist on our YouTube channel and it'll be the last video in that series. Perfect. All right. Thank you, LA. All right. So sorry about that. I got to get set up for the next part here where we're going to talk about bonds. So uh, let me try to do a screen share. Bear with me in one second. All right. Before we go to that, yeah, uh, we did a section that we were going to cover about oh, is uh, there? Being, I'm sorry, I missed it. Yeah, this about uh, the value of being exposed to both ecosystems on two blockchains. Oh, yeah, 100%. So sorry. Thanks, LA. You always keep me on track here. So yeah, I mean, I touched on a little bit, but just to reiterate, I mean, you know, the other thing is that, again, rather than trying to split your bag on, uh, you know, taking essentially robbing Peter to pay Paul, if you're liquidating positions on BNB and, and EMP, uh, you know, uh, original, uh, the idea is that you want to have exposure to both blockchains, so BNB and Pulse Chain, and multiple assets on uh, those, those chains. So in other words, again, uh, just, you know, as an aside, uh, uh, you know, proper risk management, proper portfolio building, you know, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. You want to be able to diversify into not only projects that you trust, uh, you know, that aren't going to rug tomorrow, which we definitely fit into that category, uh, but also in assets that you believe in. Uh, so again, you know, EMP ETH, you get exposure to ETH uh, through EMP. Uh, with Spark, you get exposure to Pulse. Uh, again, both of those because of the deep liquidity uh, of those tokens that are paired together. And, you know, you can earn uh, and have one protocol feed the other and vice versa. I mean, even when 
execution does go live, there again is a major argument to be made that you want to be still farming heavily on on Spark. Again, it's about uh, having exposure to both protocols. So yeah, is that Ella? You want to add to that? Go ahead. Yeah, I just think it's such a great value to have exposure to both ecosystems on two blockchains, and that our that our tokens are paired with you know, these two different um, coins um, because the, the pulse chain, pulse chain, it, even though it does follow the train, the trends of the market, I'm at least finding that pulse is pumping at times when sometimes the overall market is not. And then sometimes the overall market is pumping and pulse is not pumping as much as the overall market. So it is a really great benefit to have an established position in both ecosystems on both blockchains because like AJ just said, one of our one of our assets is paired with ETH, the other is paired with PLS and having exposure to both is such an asset because um, you know, at one part of the year or one part of the you know, the month, you know, ETH might be booming uh, at one part of the year or the month, you know, PLS might be booming, M maybe both at the same time, maybe not. But um, we kind of have all of our bases covered uh, for for multiple different situations. And we have exposure to different assets. And it's, it's also just really cool being involved in both. So in yeah. my opinion. Yeah, no, 100%. Again, nothing we say here is financial advice. But we're just trying to go over a lot of, you know, uh, uh, more deeper mindset and strategies that, again, I think a lot of people on the surface either don't think about or just don't take the time to to really ponder uh, that can really benefit you in the long run. So, again, uh, the, the whole overreaching, uh, you know, to sum everything up that we just talked about for 40 minutes, uh, you don't want to essentially liquidate your core positions to speculate or to get into other positions. The idea is that you either have some sort of way of generating fresh capital, well, whether that's a job in real life or you know maybe you want to sell some stuff that you don't use, you can bring new capital into crypto, use that new cra new capital, new capital, uh, new capital uh, to, to go into you know other projects that you believe in rather than you know selling your uh, core assets. And again, there may be a, a, again, I'm not saying, you know, maybe you have a meme token that isn't performing well. You just were, were having fun. You don't believe in the long term vision. Absolutely sell that. I mean, again, uh, there's a major difference between speculative assets and core positions. So uh, hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And, you know, again, we're not here to sell shame. We're never here to tell you what to do. At the end of the day, it's you that push the buttons uh, on your MetaMask and your Rabi or whatever other wallet you use. Um, we're just simply here to, again, give uh, some input as crypto veterans and, you know, what we are, are trying to accomplish as a community together. So, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, LA. I, I, I think we're good now. That was the last point. <laughs> Anything else before we move on to Bonds? No, that was it. All right. Amazing. Give me one more minute. I'm going to pull up my screen. All right, perfect. So uh, a lot of you, uh, we, we touched on this a little bit on the last AMA, uh, you know, but a lot of you probably don't even know that we have EMP Treasury Bond. So this was an initiative that we launched back in November of last year. Uh, and I just want to give a quick update. Again, uh, these bonds uh, with my face on them. Uh, obviously, you know, if we didn't believe in it and, and weren't conservative, you know, I would not have put my face uh, on the bonds, but uh, we're, we're doing really well. I mean, we are hopefully going to get an update from Brian. Uh, he's been extremely busy in his personal life. He is a trader, uh, you know, that, that we use uh, uh, to help generate the, the funds. Um, but again, uh, everything is super healthy. And I wanted to show some really cool metrics. So hang on one second. All right, so I don't have any NFTs in this wallet, but uh, again, you can see in profile 
uh, all of this really cool metrics. So again, we started on the 2nd of November. Uh, these will mature on the 27th of October, uh, 2024. And the starting price of these NFTs were $250 USDC. The current price today is almost $300. So that means in those three months or four months, you've actually earned $50 per NFT and the end price will be 400 USDC. And again, the way we do that is through, uh, you know, a ever increasing amount, uh, floor price of 5% per month for one year, which works out to about a 60 or it does work out to a 60% APR. And again, that might not be the most attractive yield in, in you know, uh, the degenerate space, but this is about as sure as you can get. And even from our insurance fund alone, we have enough to pay out the liabilities uh, on the NFT. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have been sleeping on these. Uh, the marketplace, again, there's two sellers right now. Uh, you can buy one or you can buy all of them. Um, and, you know, you just click here, you approve, you buy, everything is settled in USDC, and then you hold until the maturity date uh, and you get paid out that full $400 per NFT. Or you can turn around and sell your NFT at any time uh, on the marketplace, given, you know, there has to be a buyer. Uh, but there's just so much, again, it's a great little savings account, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and, you know, I just want to highlight this again. So, LA, anything you want to add about bonds? I mean, they've been, every day, they, they go up in value. So, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah, I got a whole whack of them. I was really excited about them when we launched them. So um, I consider it my long-term savings account. Um, it uh, It's a nice, like, forced savings program for one year. Um, we have our, you know, our, our everyday kind of you watch it grow stuff in EMP and SparkSwap. And then we have this kind of set it and forget it for a year forced savings program. So that's why I really like this. It's a really nice APR considering it's a, a long-term one-year kind of stable coin option. So I really liked it. Um, I went and, <laughs> you know, you like it when you tell a fam family member, but I called my mom up. I'm like, she convinced me to go in for more than I originally planned. <laughs> so yeah, I thanks, did. mom, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I went for it. But yeah, no, I'm excited when I, I log in about once a month to just stare at the screen and see how it's grown. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Killer. Well, and again, we have a, a FAQ section. If you go back and uh, listen to some of the old AMAs, just uh, search for bonds uh, in, in our YouTube videos. You can find out a lot of information. We go into everything in depth uh, on how, you know, yields are made uh, and what it looks like. And again, the marketplace, you know, uh, there there's always people listening and buying uh, on the marketplace. So, uh, and a lot of you may have never even heard of this because you're new uh, through SparkSwap uh, and Pulse. So this is on uh, the BNP network. Um, so again, you would just come over, you buy the bonds in uh, USDC. Uh, again, you can buy them all, or you can just press, you know, however many you want on any of these, you approve and you confirm and the bonds show up in your wallet and then they will show, oh, hang on, they'll show right here. So uh, again, it'll say my NFTs and then it'll have one, two, three, uh, however many you bought. So just remember too, these are a little bit different NFTs. They are not uh, uh, transferable. So you do have to buy them on whatever wallet and they only are, are sellable or redeemable through our marketplace. And the reason that we do that is because, again, we, we keep that ever-increasing floor value of 5% per month. Uh, and again, it's in real time. You'll see the current price tick up uh, every few minutes or so, um, or day or hours. Um, but again, the, the reason we keep it all in-house is that we don't have that secondary market arbitrage because all of these NFTs will be, again, redeemable at the very end uh, for that full $400 per NFT. So, and when you do redeem, then it will burn your NFT um, uh, the same way if you sell your NFT, it burns uh, or it burns and then remints 
uh, an NFT in the new buyer's wallet. So, uh, yeah, uh, I think that covers the majority of it. Uh, and there is a quick sale option, uh, but again, that's only in an emergency. There is some liquidity there if you wanted to sell immediately, but you're taking, you're forfeiting all of your yield and you're taking an additional 10% hit. So only do that if it's a true emergency, definitely try to sell your uh, NFT on the marketplace first. So, uh, all right, LA, anything you want to add to that or anything I didn't cover? Yes. So, well, just to reiterate, just because I want to make sure for those who are brand new to this, sure. one thing I love about the NFTs, the bonds, is that they're really fair for everyone involved uh, if you're getting in late or if you're selling uh, midway through. So, if you go back to the marketplace page, please. For sure. Um, so, those who are selling will receive the price of base plus any uh, profit that they've made up or interest, shall I say, that they've made up until this very moment. And then if you're buying, you're buying at that price, which is base plus, plus interest, and you'll earn any interest remaining from this moment until that ending point, which was October 27th, I believe. Yep. And so because of that, it's super fair. No one can set their own price. It's, it's set like that for everyone. So uh, that's my favorite part that it's just really super fair for everyone. It's both fair for the seller and the buyer that everyone is receiving that 60%. Um, it's just that if you're selling or buying midway through, it's split between the seller and the buyer. Yeah, great, great points, LA. Again, just to reiterate, you know, everybody selling their NFT right now, they only paid $250 uh, for it, assuming they got in on day one. Uh, so they're already $50 uh, per NFT in profit. So if you didn't want to hold until the end of the year, you know, you could sell at $350. And then you make fifty dollars per NFT, uh, or again you hold to the very end, and you're guaranteed the full uh, four hundred dollar uh, uh, price per NFT. So yeah, it's very flexible. Again, uh, the 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 website and code uh, is also a collaboration with our friends at DexFi, so you know everything is safe. Uh, and yeah, I mean it's just another uh, tool in our DeFi tool belt. Uh, that we called the the mothership, right, LA? So, yeah. all right, awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and pull back. I think that was it. Um, and again, if anybody has any other questions about bonds, we're happy to answer uh, on the next AMA. So, all right, one moment. All right, what do we have up next, LA? Before I get my notes, maybe you can tell you me. Know it's, yeah. You know it's Stinky Beans approved if we get a Mamma Mia. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yes. All right. Um, All right, so next we're going to talk about Monstros. Yeah, so again, uh, just some more uh, updates without, within, within our protocol and uh, our partners. So uh, this part, again, is more about some of our partner protocols. Um, so we'll start with Monstros. Uh, for those of you that don't know, they are releasing what they're calling a 1.5. Again, this was a very successful uh, partnership that we had. Uh, it is a, uh, you know, an ROI style contract, high risk, high reward. Um, uh, and it came to an end a bit earlier than we were all hoping, um, but there's always been that promise that they are paying out everybody that is owed uh it's basically an unruggable roi contract which is super unique and the reason that we got behind it uh, because everybody will be made whole plus their profits um so they are still everything is still the same plan um but they're releasing a 1.5 uh update to the contract where uh there is opportunity to earn uh in the meantime uh as well so that the the end uh, goal is eventually converting everybody into the NFTs, and then you will receive your profit uh, uh, weekly based on what you're owed. Uh, but this is a kind of really cool interim solution uh, that will still allow you to earn 
uh, daily even, rather than weekly. So we'll have a full update on this. Uh, if you join the Montrose uh, Discord, you can um, uh, find out more. Um, and we'll, we'll do a full announcement uh, as soon as they get their audit back, which should be you know within the next 24 hours. Um, and uh, remember that we also have a partner NFT with them. Uh, I call them the, the Care Bear uh, the Care Bear uh, monster, he reminds me of a Care Bear. So uh, the Sparky Care Bear uh, is still providing additional yield within that protocol as well. So again, I uh, just want to keep everybody in the loop. They're making good on everything they said they would. Uh, and I'm pretty bullish on this next version uh, of the 1.5 uh, contract. So uh, if you still have money owed, you can start claiming uh, about a week after launch. Uh, but they're building up the liquidity again, and I'm sure that you'll see a lot more uh, uh, coverage about this as well. So, all right, LA, anything you want to add to, about Monstros? Nope. All right, so let's move on. Again, we said this would be a long one, so bear with us. All right, LA, do you want to start with this and then I'll kind of fill in? I mean, we, we pretty much can stick to the script, but... Yeah, or would you rather me start? Sure, either way. So we wanted to cover L1X and L1DEX next. Um, so obviously, most of you probably saw that there was an announcement made about the L1X Foundation deciding to launch an early bootstrap phase in order to provide seed liquidity on uh, the L1X token pairs for the upcoming mainnet launch. Um, we do need some additional time for testing to ensure that the code is safe and ready for us to deploy contracts that are pertaining to L1 DEX. Um, we have now just been granted access to the DevNet, um, and this allows us to now deploy on a live environment so that we're in a position to do testing and audits of our own. Um, so the foundation will be launching their balancer pool offerings in about a week, and we're still working closely with the foundation and plan to have the decks live and ready at main net launch. Um, when we go into the next few weeks, you'll have a few different options for where you'll want to invest your funds. And so just a reminder, uh, when the decks launches, We'll have attractive APRs on offer that don't require locking your funds. And so it may be beneficial to sit back and just consider all your options to see what feels like the best one for you before making a decision. Yep, perfect, LA. Again, I agree 100%. I mean, we are still trying to do all of our due diligence, you know, uh, as far as building uh, and what we now have access to. You know, the goal uh, uh, overall is that, you know, uh, the L1X team transfers uh, ownership of everything that they're doing too in regards of the DEX itself. Um, so, you know, everything in that regard is on track. We just don't want people to get stuck making a decision that, you know, they may regret if and when L1DEX uh, has their own uh, bootstrapping as well. So uh, you have plenty of time. Again, I think they push back uh, the deposits again now uh, till next week, um, and we'll hopefully have an update for all of you before then as well. Um, uh, but yeah, just you know, don't don't ape into anything. Uh, just weigh all your options and then decide what's best for you. Uh, as we both are all uh, all parties try to move forward. So all right, uh, I think that covered that. La again, anything else you're gonna add? Nope, that was it. Um, oh, and then. Uh... Yeah, is there anything else you wanted to add for that section? Because yeah. I had one more set. Yeah, no, again, we're just, we're trying to move forward ASAP. Uh, obviously, you know, we're trying to make sure that everything is tested and working. Uh, you know, uh, we we have the reputation, again, even with Fusion, you know, uh, which, again, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. Uh, but we, we check and recheck, you know, uh, a, a thousand times because we would never want to launch something, you know, that we're not 100% uh, behind and we know you know, that we've built the code ourselves. So uh, again, just to give everybody a bit of a background on that, and we're excited for, you know, hopefully getting things off to the races uh, with L1X, for sure. For sure. And having access to the dev 
uh, the DevNet is is a really great step now so that we can do that testing and auditing that we need to do in order to really finalize things to make them happen. So it's Perfect. good stuff. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And then we have one more little bit and then I'll just scan quickly on the live chat for maybe some very last minute questions. But uh, we, we did come through an hour. I thought we'd be at least an hour and a half. But uh, anyway, Spritz, right, Ellie? Go ahead. This is your... Ba our baby, right? We love spritz. Yeah. Yes. So when they uh, relaunched their referral program, they had to give us a new referral code. And it was kind of just like random letters and numbers. And I had requested that we would get a EMP branded referral code. And so they were able to make that happen. And so I wanted to share it with all of you. This will be our last and final, oh, I have to type in H, uh, T -T -P -S. Um, this will be our last and final referral code. <laughs> uh, it will not be changing again, I promise, but this is the one that you can save and share. <laughs> um, there you go. Now you can click it. Perfect. Um, but this won't be changing again, so um there you go perfect yep and again for those who's listening it's app.spritz.finance forward slash emp money all one word and yeah we've been working with that team uh very closely again some other bullish announcements hopefully in regards to fusion uh and spritz uh we'll leave that for a later date uh but if you're not using spritz you are absolutely missing out even today, I mean, it's it's crazy to me. So I got a message about an hour before the AMA from one of the crypto OGs uh, that I've known, again, since I got into crypto. And he asked me what onboarding uh, site do you use uh, for on-ramp and off-ramp? And I said, bro, have you tried Spritz? And he's like, no, what's Spritz? So I, I showed it to him. Literally 10 minutes later, he's like, this is like the best thing ever invented. So again, yes. it's, it's so, so powerful. Uh, and if you are using our affiliate link, LA, maybe just go over that real quick. Uh, they will get a bonus, but they have to qualify, right? Uh, you want to explain that? Yeah. So don't sign up until you're ready to start using it. And if you, uh, if you do bill payments or on-ramping, off-ramping, of at least a hundred dollars not in one transaction but just in total in your first month then you'll get it's either a 20 or 25 dollar bonus uh which you can use towards paying your bills perfect yep 100 percent. and so and that will also qualify you uh under our referral program um so you know we get a credit moving forward and again you know we it's not about the money we just want to promote an amazing product uh, but all the affiliate links or commissions uh, also support, uh, you know, our ecosystem. So, again, uh, help yourself by helping us and uh, spread the word. I mean, spread our EMP money link uh, to others. It is a very minimal KYC, but overall, you know, Spritz is very uh, lenient on reporting. I mean, it, it's just an incredible product. So, uh, it's worth every penny. Uh, that they charge in fees. Uh, and even that, the fees are extremely comparable, uh, you know, to even, you know, again, Coinbase, their their fees are even higher when you factor in, you know, moving money around and having to, to only work on ETH. Uh, so again, it's very, very powerful. I could not say more great things about Spritz. And one last thing, LA, they ha are now available in the UK as well, right? I think they've onboarded or added a lot more countries. Yeah, UK, uh, Europe, Australia, a whole bunch of countries. So it's cool. great. All right. I have one more announcement that just kind of happened while we were on the AMA, which is exciting. Uh, All right. thanks, Let's hear it. And thanks to our amazing admin, Will, who helped out with this. Uh, SparkSwap was now just added to Pulse Chain Bubbles. So you can find our token on there. Killer. Right on. Well, Shout out to Will. Again, Will is one of our longtime admins, uh, an amazing guy. He's also the uh, team lead uh, for Glass Token. We'll have more announcements uh, on that coming as well. 
Um, and yeah, he's always helping out, uh, whether it's connections or, you know, uh, helping us get listed. So thank you, Will. And yeah, Pulse Chain Bubbles. Again, a lot of you might know about uh, the, the classic Bubbles, uh, you know, UI. It's basically a way to check what tokens uh, have gone up or gone down uh, the most in a given period. Uh, it allows you to look at everything at once rather than pulling up, you know, a hundred different charts. So definitely check that out. Uh, we'll post the official link uh, in our socials for sure. So uh, also yeah, on Twitter, and I just posted it in the chat here. Perfect. All right. Well, on that note, again, and LA, anything you want to add? Was there any last minute questions in the live chat? I know we're going to skip questions overall today, but uh, I can answer a few if you see one. Uh, but yeah, and then we can wrap it up. Go ahead. Um, no, I, that was all I had. Um, cool. Yeah. I don't see any other questions either. So I think we're good. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know, I might have one, <laughs> but I'll let you, uh, I'll let you do it, wrap it up. I'm sure his question's a bit, uh, cheeky. <laughs> uh, oh, the the o overall. oh, there you mm -hmm. are. That is a, a legitimate question. I thought Vina was going to give us something spicy. Uh, so yeah, a lot of you may know, that we are planning to update the UI on SparkSwap as well. Um, we have a really, really awesome uh, addition to Spark uh, that we really haven't even talked about yet. Um, that will be happening first. And then after that, we will do the UI update. So again, uh, I don't like talking about dates, uh, especially considering you know what we've been through with Fusion, but uh, soon. <laughs> so again, it's next up. Uh, after this next update, you know, it should be here sooner than later. And uh, we already have, again, maybe next week or the week after we can start posting some teasers. Uh, we already have some designs back uh, and it's super bullish. I mean, LA, I love the new branding. I mean, it's the same logo, but <laughs> yeah, it looks yeah. really good, right? Yeah, it's a major upgrade. For sure. So, all right, awesome. There you go. Some, some last minute alpha. Uh, for all of you. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, LA, go ahead. Any final words? Yeah. And so we went over this at the beginning, but no, the, the boosts um, for the vaults were temporary and they have now, uh, those boosts have, those boosts have now been completed. So they are the regular APYs now. No, um, we are just on time to go prep for our meeting. And uh, so that's perfect timing. Awesome. But thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, it has been such an exciting week so far. We literally, the amount we have accomplished this week is pretty insane so far. Um, there's been so many meetings and so many things on the go, but um, lots and lots of progress. So um, it's a, all good, uh, all good progress. So thank you guys for joining us. Um, Always a pleasure. It was nice to have uh, a really thorough, in-depth one tonight after a few short and sweet ones for sure. uh, previously. So uh, thanks for bearing with us for a long one. And uh, we appreciate you guys. And we'll look forward to seeing you again on Monday. All right. There you have it. And, uh, if you have uh, questions. I know we didn't uh, really cover them tonight. So just make sure to leave them in um, the Discord and we will cover them all on Monday. We'll have a long Q&A period. We did quite a long one on, on Monday, so that's why we weren't too stressed about uh, holding off tonight. But um, we'll do a really long one on Monday if there's lots of questions. Perfect. All right, awesome. Thank you, LA. And yes, again, uh, the best way to get your questions in is over on Discord. We have a dedicated channel for that alone. Um, and then we'll, we'll get to it on the next AMA and please remember to watch old AMAs as well. I know it's a lot to ask, you know, uh, hour, hours at a time, but if you can watch it on 1.5 or 2x speed, uh, you can get a lot of your info and even at the very least, uh, shout out to all of our, again, uh, admins, uh, Darusik, I know a few others, David, uh, again, some amazing individuals, uh, the actual timestamp. And, uh, you know, give a, a written uh, version of the AMA. So if you don't speak English. Roarsome. Or, yeah, Roarsome. That's it, too. Thank you, LA. I always forget everybody. But, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We, uh, we, we appreciate all of you. And there's no excuse 
uh, for anybody that can't keep uh, up to date on what's happening. Um, and, you know, there's just a lot of bullish things uh, uh, as we move forward. So, uh, and that also helps with our engagement. Uh, if you go back and watch older videos, uh, it will also help get our views up. So, uh, all right, I think that will do it. Again, thank you all for being here. Uh, appreciate each and every one of you. We have a ton in the pipeline. The future is very bright, uh, especially with the market absolutely on fire. Again, uh, if we can hit a new all-time high before the happening uh, on, on Bitcoin, I mean, I don't even know what that will do to the market. So uh, you can hear in my voice how excited I am. But uh, again, really exciting stuff. And we're all here first, man. I know, you know, it can get frustrating, you know, with everything going on. But remember, we are the 1% of the 1%. And retail, you know, they think crypto is holding a token in your wallet on Coinbase uh, or a centralized exchange. So uh, we are trailblazers and we will have all the uh, economic rewards that we can hope for uh, as long as we all stick with it, you know, as crypto begins more and more adoption globally. So, all right. I love all of you. Thank you again. Good night. Good day. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.